bring in Ross Tucker, NBC Sports Network football analyst. Played in the league for quite – how many years did you play in the league, Ross? Five teams in seven years, Dan. You're, uh, you're classic journeyman. <laughs> All right, but you took notes along the way, and that's what we love about you. Always love your perspective. How many fights do you think you saw in the locker room? Oof. In the locker room? Probably only about two or three. Now, I do remember one that was actually in the shower – and then those guys agreed mutually to take it outside, which was very interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Guys are naked fighting in the shower? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't actually in there, but you could just hear guys start to yell and hoot and holler, and then it kind of got broken up. And then my recollection is they agreed to go outside and, and settle it. And they both kind of came back in, and the one guy definitely looked worse for the wearer than the other guy. So this is not that unusual. I mean, Dan, you know, I was in Washington the year after – uh, Michael Westbrook punched Stephen Davis oh, on the field during yeah. stretching. I can remember when I was playing, Olin Krutz didn't like that Fred Miller kept talking trash at a team-building event, and he <laughs> broke Fred Miller's jaw, and Olin Krutz wasn't disciplined at all. You know, I guess Fred Miller had been saying stuff, and you do not want to mess with Olin Krutz, and he broke his jaw. So I think this stuff probably happens a little bit more than people realize. I just think now with the media and Twitter and everything, it's even more. Okay, but if I look at Geno Smith and his standing in the locker room, how much did that play a role in what happened yesterday? Well, evidently not at all. I mean, you'd think that he would have the standing to not do it. I mean, to, for this IK and Impali kid to not do I me. Mean, think about this. There's a lot of guys I've wanted to punch during my career. There's one quarterback I definitely would have loved to have punched, but I, I was never going to do that. I mean, I was a journeyman offensive lineman. So for this kid, IK, to basically sacrifice his career because of whatever Geno did or the $600 or whatever. And I know some people might say, Dan, well, he clearly wasn't thinking clearly. Well, guess what? Neither was I sometimes, but I still wasn't going to hit the quarterback <laughs> because I had enough sense to know that that would have been my ticket out of there. So it says a lot about this kid, IK, but I think it says even more about Geno Smith. I had a couple other things I want to touch on. I always love your perspective. If you're the judge with Deflategate today, what do you think you could say that would have both of these sides not cave in, but they would find a, a, that there'd be a common ground, a, a, a nice landing spot for them? Well, I actually wrote about this in my column this week, and I totally agree with where you're coming from. The sweet spot here is a game or two, and probably just one game, in which the NFL announces that Brady's suspended for one game as part of the settlement terms for failure to cooperate, so that Brady is not sort of branded with the scarlet C on his chest, right? He's not, he's not considered a cheater forever. Because Brady, you know, the latest reports are from Shefty and everybody that the NFL wants Brady to accept the Wells report. He'll never mm -hmm. do that. I mean, wh whether he did it or not, he'll go Barry Bonds, he'll go Roger Clemens. I mean, he'll go to the Supreme Court. He'll never admit that. If you're the NFL, you don't want to take the chance of losing this. And, and, and basically every player is saying, all you have to do is sue him, you're fine. I think the NFL should be willing to give him just one game and, and just say it was for lack of cooperation, throwing away his phone, whatever. And I think Brady should accept that as well. And after seeing what was uh, Ben Affleck flying with Tom Brady and his uh, Ben's nanny, I guess maybe we that's, Tom didn't want to show his phone if uh, there are pictures like that on there. <laughs> well, how fun was it, by the way, Dan, reading, about, reading Brady's emails, like how mad he was that he couldn't get the white pool cover? <laughs> I wouldn't have turned over my phone either because there, there's other stuff on there that would be made public eventually. And uh, I, so I get it, but I, but I think the NFL is going to come down hard on him because of that. Here's the other thing. Dan Levitard uh, tweeted this last night. J.J. Watt so badly wants to appear to be the thing he thinks you want your sports hero to be. Soak that in. What do you think? I think there's some truth to that. I, you know, I, I think J.J. Watt is phenomenal as a player, and I think he is kind of the ideal player right now. But I think he's probably trying a little bit too hard. And let's not kid ourselves. There's a lot of guys out there that have a very carefully crafted image 
you know, Russell Wilson, uh, you know, to some extent Brady, Peyton Manning. I mean, there's no question. Be- you know, Derek Jeter, he was very careful with that. I just think with those guys, it's not as obvious that they're trying to portray the character that you want them to be. Because I would say I love J.J. as a player, but nobody's all the way the way he's pretending to be right now. I mean, I just think he's – and sometimes maybe that happens. Look, I'm not famous. I was never that good of a player. And maybe you get to the point where, you know, you're getting so much attention for something that you, you want to continue to be that for everybody. You, you want to be that ideal they hold up. Well, sometimes you don't even know that you've become something until somebody points it out. That uh, I remember uh, an Oriole player said that other players got mad at Cal Ripken because he made them look bad. He signed autographs after every game, and they didn't like that. Uh you know, certain guys play a certain way. A Jeter was that way, very controlled in what you saw. Um, so Russell Wilson's the same way. I, I guess the way I look at it is, would I rather have J.J. Watt, Russell Wilson, Derek Jeter, Cal Ripken, who maybe have a controlled personality there or what they present, or the other side of it? And I'll gladly take, you know, those players. Totally agree, because if – if they're if it's carefully crafted, Dan, it tells you that they know the environment they're in. They know how important it is to present a certain image. They know that they're a face of a franchise. I mean, would you rather have that, or would you rather have a guy that missed a meeting in San Diego the day before a game because he was at the movies because supposedly his cell phone didn't change the time? And then in the offseason, he doesn't go to a guy's camp, doesn't tell the guy he's not coming to a camp. There's one report out that his friend died. There's another report out that his brother got hurt in a bike accident, had to take him to the hospital. Hospital, never tells the guy he's not going and doesn't give him the 600 bucks. And according to Rich Samini, was staring this guy down in the hallway mm. is what Geno Smith was doing. I mean, if you're the Jets, it's, it's beyond clear at this point, Dan, that this guy can't be a franchise quarterback. And actually, it, it probably works out better for them this way because with Fitzpatrick, look, maybe they have a chance to make the playoffs this year. they got a really good defense. See what Fitzpatrick can do. If he can't do it, midway through the year, you put Geno in for the last seven, eight, nine, ten games or whatever and give him one last kick of the tires before you decide to draft somebody else next year. Uh, you got a new podcast. Yeah, man, the College Draft Podcast. You know I'm in the podcast. I listen to yours when I get a chance sometimes. So I've got the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, but i got a new one, the College Draft Podcast. It's pretty cool, just breaking down the top prospects now. Everybody does it, you know, March, April, May. We're doing it now. It's a good way to preview college games, too. How many first-round draft picks do you think we have? Quarterbacks. Uh, at least four, I'd say. Although, you know, listening to you and Pat Forty and the whole Cardell Jones thing, I mean, he couldn't be right. I, I, I still can't believe that that guy did not turn pro. It, when are these guys going to realize, Dan, that the smaller sample size you yes. have, the better? <laughs> three three games of excellence. That's 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 the best you can do. That's I know. Perfect. I know. I agree. I'm right there with you. I, I'm right there with you. But you got Connor Cook. You got, uh, what, Hackenberg? Got yeah, Hackenberg's unbelievable talent. It, it, I've never seen a guy, I think he had like 12 touchdowns, 18 interceptions. I've never seen a guy coming off a worse year get more hype than Hackenberg. I watch a lot of Penn State football. I'm a central Pennsylvania guy. But he's just crazy talented. Everybody wants that. So th- those are the main guys, I think, are the guys in the Big Ten, believe it or not. You know, those are the three guys that a lot of people really have their eyes on. You think Cardale Jones be a first-round draft pick, even if he doesn't play this year? If he doesn't play this year, I don't think he will. Oh, okay. If he doesn't play this year, I think it's second or third round. <laughs> I think if he had went pro last year, Dan, I, I would not have been surprised if he snuck into the bottom of the round one. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. And somebody said either bottom one or certainly in the second round. And, and I agree. I'd rather learn, get paid in the pros than to sit and watch JT Barrett this season. And look, maybe he does start. I get the feeling Barrett is what Urban Meyer wants. Well, and, and Dan, forget recruiting. How does Urban Meyer get all these guys to stay? You know, I, I guess the Braxton Miller thing I understand because yeah. he's switching positions, but I thought he should have transferred somewhere and played quarterback. But for the NFL wide receiver, I get it. I don't know what they said to Cardell Joe. I mean, I, I think his recruiting of keeping certain guys on the team and on the roster is probably even more impressive than all these guys he's bringing in. <laughs> Good luck with the podcast. Always great to talk to you, Ross. Absolutely. Thanks, Dan. All right, Ross Tucker.